Hey, it's Mario and welcome back to another tutorial. This one is an overview of gyroscopes, AKA gyros. Let's take a look. Okay, so gyros are used in ships, aircraft, spacecraft, and a bunch of other applications to provide an orientation reference. A gyroscope is simply a spinning mass. The angular momentum of this spinning mass results in two very useful properties. These properties are rigidity in space and gyroscopic precession. Rigidity in space is the tendency for the gyroscope to remain orientated in space which simply means that the spin axis located here on this gyroscope will remain pointing in the same direction. This means that the gyro can be mounted in gimbals and as the base is rotated around, the gyro will remain in place. Rigidity in space is useful because the orientation of the gyro can be used by mechanical and electrical systems to determine the orientation of the base which in a flight instrument is mounted to the airframe. So if a gyro tends to remain orientated in space, what happens if we try to force it out of its orientation? Well, the answer is precession happens. Precession is a behavior of a gyro that follows from forcing the gyro out of its plane of spin. If we apply a torque to the gyro to rotate it out of its plane of spin, the momentum of the gyro moves the torque by 90 degrees in the direction of the spin. So for example, if we have a horizontal gyro that is spinning left about its yaw axis and we try to make it roll right, it will instead pitch forward. Rigidity in space and precession allow us to measure different things. Rigidity in space allows us to measure orientation or angular position. Precession allows us to measure the rate of change of orientation. The terminology used to refer to these gyros is angle gyros and rate gyros. The difference between an angle gyro and a rate gyro is in the mounting of the gyro, not the gyro itself. An angle gyro is mounted so that the instrument casing can move around it and the gyro is unaffected. This type of mount is called a gimbal. Each axis of rotation requires its own gimbal so that a freely rotating gyro must have at least three gimbals. Rate gyros are mounted so that they are forced to rotate with the instrument casing in one direction and are spring loaded in the precession direction. The spring loading is calibrated so that the deflection of the gyro is proportional to the rate of rotation. This system requires two gimbals, one for the direction of spin and one for the direction of precession. Both angle and rate gyros are used in aircraft instrumentation to provide reference information. As for flight instruments that use gyros, the attitude indicator and directional gyro use angle gyros to provide orientation and direction information. Also not forgetting the other gyro instruments, the turn coordinator and the turn and slip indicator use rate gyros to provide rate of turn information. We cover each gyro instrument in its own video, so be sure to check those out. Now in order for a gyro to work, power is needed to spin up the gyro to operating speed and once there to balance friction and maintain that speed. So where does this power come from? Well, instrument gyros can be powered either by electricity or vacuum suction. Electrically powered gyros are driven by electric motors. In a typical light aircraft, the turn coordinator or the turn and slip will be electrically powered. Vacuum powered gyros are driven by air being drawn over buckets in the gyro rim. This air is drawn by the engine driven vacuum pump. In a typical light aircraft, the attitude indicator and the directional gyro will be vacuum powered. The reason for using multiple power sources is redundancy. If one power source fails, the other is independent and some gyros will keep working. Before wrapping up this tutorial, it should be noted, gyroscopes don't only show up in traditional flight instruments. Even glass cockpit displays use gyroscopes. These gyroscopes are solid state and use vibration instead of rotation, but the same principles apply. High-end modern avionics sometimes use ring laser gyros, which operate on a completely different set of principles, but provide essentially the same information. And inertial navigation systems can provide navigation data independent of outside references, such as GPS. These systems also use gyroscopes in conjunction with accelerometers. So there you have it. That's an overview of gyroscopes. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure not to miss our next video by liking our Facebook page Page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And of course, until next time, onwards and upwards, thanks for watching.